you so much for taking time out of your day to check out this video and welcome to the Red Eye. And before I get started, I just want to say thank you so much to everyone out there who's been watching my videos. Thank you. If you can maybe give this video a thumbs up or possibly leave a comment below or maybe share this video. It means so much to me. But just anyway, at least thank you so much for taking time out of your day to check out this video. Thank you. Well, we got, you know, some good news on the injury front. We got some bad news. So, you know, kind of uh, start off with the uh, the bad news, right? And we got five guys. Now, there'll be some guys I'm sure will be inactive, you know. Uh, that won't come out until, you know, probably Monday. But five guys that are pretty much ruled out for Monday night football. That's the Chiefs, right? We got uh, Saquon. Kenny Galladay. <laughs> then we got the two linebackers. <laughs> we got Lorenzo Carter and Carter Coughlin. CNC Music Factory. Carter Coughlin and Lorenzo Carter. Yeah, both those guys rolled out. And then Nate Ebner. He's got an ankle problem. He had a quad problem for a couple uh, games there. Now he's got an ankle problem. So, so those are the five guys that are rolled out. Um, after Monday night, then we got a, a, what they call a quick turnaround because then we got to play Sunday. However, after that, we got a bye week. Oh, <laughs> with any luck, maybe we can get, maybe, maybe we can get a Saquon and a Kenny Galladay sighting. Wouldn't that be just unbelievable, huh? <sighs> That's a shame. I mean, it, it's, it's unbelievable. The amount of the talent we got, we can't just get them on the field. It's just simply amazing. Absolutely, absolutely. It's just unbelievable. Unbelievable. All right. But then, uh, so there's, then there's three players, okay, who are listed as questionable. All right, and they got Sterling Shepard with his hamstring, Kadarius Tony with his ankle, and Cade Smith, he's, he's, he's had his knee. He's had the knee pretty much like all year. So, I mean, he's still got his knee. But I said, but hopefully, you know, if we can make it through, you know, these next two games, I mean, if, if we can at least win one of them and be three and six, they give you a little hope, you know, and maybe get some guys, you know, back. Uh, Andrew Thomas, wouldn't that be huge, right? Get, get some of these offensive weapons either healed up or get them on the field. That would be huge. Um, you know, there's a good, you know, shame we don't have all, I mean, everybody's got injuries. Giants, you know, but it's like, Everybody, I mean, you, you can go to certain teams, you know, and, you know, every week they have the same guys in there starting running back, starting wide receivers, starting quarterback, every week, every week, every week. Then you get the Giants, it's just like, it's like a rotating, you know what I mean? Well, this week we got Sterling Shepard in and, and Galladay and ba uh, uh, Saquon and Evan Ingram are out. We got, uh, you know, we got Kadarius Tony in, we got Sterling Shepard in. Then two weeks later, because Sterling Shepard's out, Kadarius Tony's out, but we got Evan Ingram, man, but Saquon's still on the side. Yeah, I mean, it's like, it, wouldn't it be just unbelievable if we can get him, Saquon and, and you know, the, the three, uh, Shepard and Kadarius Tony and Galladay in there. Wouldn't that be just amazing, right? Wouldn't that, you know, I, it's, it's a shame. I mean, you know, you don't know what's going to happen Monday night. You know, the, the Chiefs, you know, rightfully so. I think the last time I looked like a nine-and-a-half point fa favorite, you know. Even though they got blown out last week to the Titans, 27-3. to And the Giants won 25-3, to you know. The Giants are still rightfully so a um, big underdog, you know. I mean, and, you know, the Chiefs only scored three points last week. But obviously, don't let that fool you. <laughs> okay. Uh, it's a whole new week. Uh, now they're coming home Monday night. The Giants a lot of times don't fare very well in prime time. Daniel Jones does not fare very well in prime time. Yeah, Daniel Jones hasn't won yet in prime time. Um, you know, but so you know, there's a good chance the Chiefs are going to, you know, um, put up some points. I mean, they only scored three points last week, but you know, you know, and you know. It, Patrick Mahomes has been struggling a little bit. He's had some turnovers. I think he's like nine interceptions. 
you know, so yes, you know, it's some struggling, okay? But, you know, you know, they're gonna put up some points, okay? You just gotta, you know, I mean, I'd be shocked if they scored under 30 points. If the Giants held them to like 27 points or less, I'd be pretty surprised, okay? However, I mean, like the Giants, if they, you know, I know Evan Ingram, he's been nursing his calf, you know. Um, but I mean, if we can get, you know, like maybe Shepard, uh, and, 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 and Tony, and maybe if Evan Ingram is out there playing, you know, that would be huge. Because, I mean, the Giants could, you know, as, as I once again, if we had all our weapons, we could, we could easily score some points at, on Kansas City. Easily. I mean, if, if we had a healthy Galladay, a healthy Gadarius Tony, a healthy Evan Ingram, a healthy Sterling Shepard, a healthy Saquon Barkley, and we had, uh, you know, Andrew Thomas, you know, protecting the blind side, and a healthy Daniel Jones, we could easily put up some points against this defense. I mean, defense is horrible. I mean, they're number 29 uh, in the defense, the Kansas City Chiefs defense, all right? Uh, they've given up number 29 in yards allowed. They've given up 2,832 yards. So basically, they're giving up, uh, what is it, 400 in seven games, they're giving up 404 yards on average. You're averaging giving up over 400 yards of offense every game. At the number 29 in points allowed, they've given up 203 points. They've given up 29. <laughs> they've given up 29 points a game. Whew, wow, really bad. Um, they uh, they're last, absolute last. The Kansas City Chiefs, number 32, giving up in uh, yards per play allowed. They're giving up 6.6 .6 yards per play. So basically, every play, hey, you get two plays against them, basically, you're getting 13 yards. So you got a first down. <laughs> I mean, at the last, the number 27, they've, in first downs allowed, they've given up 165 yard uh, first downs allowed. I mean, there's a lot of, a lot of, uh, stats here that are bad. I mean, I feel Steve Spagnuolo is having a rough, brutal, brutal year over there. They're tied for 27th. They're allowing 4.7 yards a carry, which is a shame because, you know, we don't have Saquon in there. I mean, you know, you know we got Devontae Booker, but he, he, he's not Saquon, okay? The number 25 and uh, the, in rushing yards allowed. They've allowed 902 rushing yards allowed in seven games. They're number 30 in rushing TDs allowed. They've given up 10 touchdowns so far rushing in uh, seven games. They're tied for last, giving up 61 first downs via the run. Wow. So they're giving up about eight and a half first downs every game via the run. I mean, Teams don't run the ball that much. You give up eight and a half first downs via the run every game. I mean, that's pretty bad. They're tied for 30th with 52 pen their defense with 52 penalties. Okay? The defense commits like seven penalties on defense a game. It's horrible. They're number 25, giving up 93 passing first downs. So teams are just, you know, moving up and down the field against them. Uh, their last... They only have eight sacks. They played seven games. They get eight sacks. I think they have some injuries on defense, okay? But they have eight sacks. I mean, you know. Um, they've given up uh, their number 23. I mean, the Giants aren't any, are certainly aren't any better. But they're, they are number 23. You know, the Kansas City Chiefs defense is number 23. They've given up a 67.8% completion percentage. 68% completion percentage. That's absolutely horrible. The number 29, they've only had 19 passes defensed in seven games. They're, that's 29th. They're 30th overall. They get 8.6 yards allowed per pass attempt. 8.6. That's really bad. They're number 26, giving up 275 yards a game passing. All right. The number 26 quarterback rating allowed. 104. They're number 27 with quarterback hits. They only have 30 quarterback hits. So basically every game they got like four quarterback hits. Yeah. 
their exact percentage is 3.3 percent. They're absolute last, obviously, because they only have eight sacks still. So they're number 27. All right, they're giving 128.9 yards a game rushing. All right, I mean. They're giving up 275 yards passing. They're giving up like 129 yards rushing a game. I mean, they're giving up almost 30 points a game. I mean, their defense is bad. As I said, it's such a shame that they, you know, all the you know, their offensive weapons that the Giants have, they can't you know, have them on the field. You know, because I know we could score some points. I'm certainly not saying we would go out and win. I'm not, not saying that. But we could certainly score some points on – the Chiefs without question. As long as we don't like turn Daniel Jones and throw stupid interceptions or get sacked with the fumble, strip sack with the fumble, or throw a pick six or something like that, we could score some points on these guys. And getting at least if we can get Shepard back and get Darius Tony, because nobody can cover Tony, you know, that would be huge. That would really, really be huge. I mean, look, we scored 25 points last week against Carolina. Was well, a, a nice defense, nothing super special, but a nice defense. We scored 25 points on those guys, all right, and we had Dante Pettis in there, and we had, um, you know, Colin Johnson out there and David Sills out. I mean, we scored 25 points, and we could have scored more. But, you know, so, you, right, so, you know, we did 25 on those guys, okay, with, with the guys, those guys running around out there as receivers. I mean, we should be able to score at least that we should be able to hopefully put up a 30 30 spot on kansas city and maybe at least keep the game maybe close i'm certainly not saying we're going to outscore them but i mean we should hopefully maybe be able to keep this somewhat respectable then on on the defensive side okay now there's a possibility that aaron robinson remember our third round draft choice here the core muscle surgery the possibility because he took him off ir and so did elderson smith there's a possibility one or maybe both of those guys might actually play, okay, on uh, Monday night. Now, they they only have so much longer to act because they want IR. They, ha they have to activate them and put them on the active roster. They had 21 days, three weeks, um, once they take them off of IR to get them on the active roster. If not, within the 21 days, if they don't, they're going to go back on the IR for the rest of the season. So, I mean, it would be such a shame. Your third-round pick and your fourth-round pick, boom, the season's over. I mean, they, they don't even they want to play one snap. It would be really such a shame. But, I mean, Joe Judge, you know, he, very rarely is he going to say, yes, he's playing. Or, you know what I mean? It's always like, well, we got to gotta give him time. we got to see what the trainers want to do and this and that. You know, so he's always like around the bout, never gives you a direct answer or anything like that. So, um, but, but I mean, a lot of it's also, it's not so much up to him. It is, it's up to the player and up to the trainers. You know, you know what I mean? So, but I mean, what he's been talking about is possibility Aaron Robinson might be in there. It'd be very nice to see what he can do. Uh, I know he did very, very well his senior year. Uh, in uh, in college, and then uh, I would just actually see what Ellerson Smith can do out there. A long, lean body, but it was also be huge because obviously he's going to be, you know, an edge rusher, rushing. See what he can do maybe with the or Jolari, but not only that, but we're down Carter Coughlin and Lorenzo Carter. And one of the things I was hearing um, uh, with uh, Carter Coughlin, he's got a problem with his ankle. All right, Lorenzo Carter, he's got a problem with his ankle too. But apparently, Carter Coughlin's is worse. And Carter Coughlin, I was possibly might have to go on uh, season-ending IR if it's, you know, if it's that bad. So I mean, he, he's a he's got a problem there. So I mean, so if we can get Ellerson Smith back, I mean, that would be huge. You know, especially because I mean, you got your second-round pick as an edge rusher and your fourth-round pick as an edge rusher. Wouldn't it be cool just to get them on the field at the same time and see what they can do? You know, and I, I, I said, I mean, it would be such a shame. I mean, it, it, if it, ha it is what it is, but, I mean, just to s get the guys on the field, just get a little bit of playing time, a little bit of experience. I mean, even if they wind up, I mean, even if, you know, Ellison Smith, you know, hurts his hamstring, what's he going to do? You know what I mean? He's been out the whole year. I mean, get, you know. Get him in there. I mean, what's he going to do? I mean, hurt him and he's got to go out again? Okay. I mean, he hasn't been in yet. I mean, you know, 
at least get him some playing time. So, you know, something, anything, you know. I mean, if he hurts it again, okay, well, he's out the rest of the season. But, I mean, man, just get him in there, you know. Um, now, speaking of injuries, okay, now this is, uh, you know, this is something I've always thought for, you know, a long, I, 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 just, I just hate it. Uh, Logan Ryan, okay, he was talking about, uh, he said he's not a very big fan at all. And a lot of guys aren't, of turf fields, all right. Uh, he says that there's uh, too many lower body uh, injuries on turf, which, yeah, he's right, you know. He says sometimes your ankle, you know, or, you know, or your knees, like, you know, um, not your knee, they don't get stuck, but I mean, you know, you, you, you're trying to make a cut or something and your foot gets stuck in the turf, you know, it, it can't move. It, it, it's, um, grass is a lot more forgiving, you know, I mean, you, your foot can, you know, move or slide or whatever, you know, in the turf and grass, meaning than in the turf. He says a lot of times, you know, you try to plant or something like that or whatever, and, and, you know, there's no give, you know. I mean, look at what happened to Blake Martinez. Did you, I mean, I mean, <sighs> Cordero Patterson, uh, Cordero Patterson, um, quarter, little pass out of the backfield from Matt Ryan. Uh, uh, Blake Martinez was come flying over, trying to make the tackle. Cordero, you know, faked him out. Um, uh, Blake tried, you know, tried to, you know, move, you know, because he was, he was running to, you know, make the tackle. Patterson ran, you know, cut back into the center of the field. Blake went to go with him and boom, he, 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 he fell. He fell. He landed flat on, flat on his stomach. Boom. Out for the season. His, you know, his, his foot, you know, whatever, he got caught in the turf. Boom. There you go. There's your season. Just like that. You know, he says, the, you know, also, Logan Ryan says also like a lot of, you know, if you, if you pull a lot of guys, a lot of guys do not like it at all. He says, that, you know, that, um, you know, that, uh, that the, the turf tears your knees up or you get high, high ankle sprains on turf. You know, and he's right. Now, there's one thing I always remember because I, um, I live in South Jersey here, okay, and back in 1993, you know, you know, you, you had to watch the Eagle game. There was no direct TV where, where it was like the Sunday ticket and I get, to, I get to watch, you know, like whatever games I want or anything like that. So back in 1993, uh, I believe it was, it was a one o'clock game. They were playing the Chicago Bears. Um, and when the Eagles were home, okay, the game on the other channel, if there was another game on the other channel, there was an AFC game that, was, that wasn't, that was blacked out. The Eagles were home, okay, that was the only game on. So at 1 o'clock, you had to watch the Eagles and the Bears. There was no other game on. You were fucking screwed if you liked any other team. So then what usually wound up happening was if the Eagles were home, the, the other game on 1 o'clock was blacked out. And then at 4 o'clock, there was only one other game. So if the Eagles were home, there was only two games on. Usually there's like a double header on one channel, and then the other one has another game. So there's usually like... Between 1 and 4 o'clock, usually there's like three games on. But the Eagles were home, you only get to watch two. So at 1 o'clock, the Eagles and the Bears played. While the Bears were winning 17 to nothing, it was like about four minutes left to go in the first half. All right, this is a perfect, absolute perfect example of what I'm talking about. Um, Wendell Davis, okay, wide receiver for the Chicago Bears. I think it was Jim Harbaugh threw a pass. Wendell Davis was running down the center of the field. He, uh, the, the pass wasn't like really right to him. I think he was, Wendell Davis was trying to like stop to adjust to the ball. I think the ball was like behind him or something. He, it wasn't even like he jumped up and landed. It was like he was like trying to be planted like his, his, his feet, trying to, trying to make like an adjustment on the ball. He blew both his knees out. <laughs> he ruptured both of, his, both of his patellar tendons on one play, ended his career on turf. He was running down the center of the field to try to stop, make, it, make an adjustment on the ball, blew both his patellar tendons out, ended his career. Why? He was on turf. I, I, I always remember that. I, I, just, I just couldn't believe that. Now, you know, I started watching football in 1970. You know, a lot, most of the fields were grass back then, and I don't remember it all. 
you know, I mean, there's a lot of stuff I don't remember, but I mean, just watching football back there, I, you know, especially on grass, guys, you know, trying to run and make a tackle, boom, oh, there goes their ACL. There was none of that. You know, I mean, if guys got hurt, that's because, you know, if their knees got hurt, well, that's because back then it was, the, you know, they, they were, the way they were blocking, they would take the guy's knees out and stuff like that and everything. They don't do that nowadays for the most part. But, I mean, there was very rarely any of that, especially on grass. You know, that's another one of the reasons why, like, sometimes, like, um, uh, like with soccer, right? It, a lot of that's played on, on, on natural turf. It ha has to do also with soccer. It has to do with, like, the, 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 the play, the, the speed of the game and all that. The, the, you know, the, it, if they play it on grass, the, the ball, you know, it, it's not super fast. You know, things are slowed down a little bit and all that. But it also has a lot to do with injuries. Now, you don't see you know, a lot of guys on soccer. I mean, they, the guys playing soccer, okay, they run each match, they run miles, okay? They run, you know, eight, six, seven, eight, nine miles, some of them, all right? And, you know, very rarely do you see a guy blowing out an Achilles heel or a patellar tendon or an ACL or an MCL or something. It's grass, you know? Grass is, you know... And it goes back to when I, when I used to play football, I said, I wasn't very good at all. Back in high school, we were playing on grass. I don't remember guys tearing an Achilles heel or an ACL or a patellar. There was none of that. And guys, I'll tell you what, on, in, in high school, the good guys played both ways. You know, it wasn't like you know, they played offense and come off on the field and defense. No, if you were that good of an athlete, you played offense and defense. Nobody pulled a... Uh, ruptured Achilles heel or an ACL or MCL or anything like that. I don't know anything like that at all. Now, I don't know why, but, you know, I, I guess it's, it's, I guess once it's kind of like set it and forget it, you put the, the, the turf out there, okay, and you just let the guys play, you never, you know, have to really so, per se worry about the field ever, you know, with uh, grass. You know, you got to water it, you got to sod it, you know, uh, you got to you know, fertilize it, you got to cut it. And all, you know, I, I guess it's big, big time maintenance, I guess it costs. But you got to also start looking at, you know, the, and what Logan Ryan was also pointing out too in, it, in his, his uh, you know, he, he was making his comments. He says, you're, you're taking, you know, money out of, out of the, the ball player's mouth. So you, you, you're taking some, some of them, you're taking their careers from them by making them play on, on, uh, on turf. Instead of side. Now, if you got to, you got to start weighing things out. You know, you know, um, healthier ball players. Okay, maybe you know, you know, uh, or you know, guys, you know, guys get injured on turf, but it's cheaper. You know, it might be more expensive to play with grass, but the guys' careers last longer. They they're healthier. They don't get injured as much. I mean, if anything at all, after this. 2021 season from the New York football giants with all the injuries that we have okay if there's ever a point in time where somebody you know you know really just needs to step back and say you know we've had so many injuries you know so many lower body injuries you know maybe we should really consider thinking about going back to to turf and the giants back in 2000 not only did they, they change the logo in 2000, they, they used to have the Giants on the side, but in 2000 they went back to the NY, which is what I, when I'm growing up, that's what I remember, the little NY on the side. So in 2000 they went back to NY, but not only that, they took the turf out of the Meadowlands and, and they put in natural grass. They only had the natural grass for like a, a few years because it would just get chewed up, and I guess it was such a big pain, I guess, maybe, to, to keep... To keep on top of it and got to be too expensive, but I said you got to look like this. What's more expensive? All right, you know, keeping up on a side of field or trying to you know pay guys you know to get injured and you know basically lose a whole season. What's more expensive? I mean, you know all the manpower, the hours, and everything you have to put in to get a football team up and ready for the whole season, the drafting and. The, the meetings and the scouting and all of this and the practices and all, all the money and everything like that. And you're going to, you know, even though it costs you a few million dollars, right? What, 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 what's more expensive? Spend a few million dollars to keep a grass field intact or spending, you know, five, ten, fifteen, twenty million dollars to pay a guy who's hurt 
and have them on the sideline. And not only that, the guy's hurt. But if you get a bunch of guys hurt, your season's over with. Now, I've said this before. Nothing will cut a season shorter, uh, faster than a bunch of injuries. Well, as always, guys, thank you, thank you, thank you so much for taking time out of your day. Check out this video. You guys stay safe out there. Go Giants! Woo!